वेलकम एवरी वन दिस इज द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस ऑफ थर्टीथ अगस्त ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू एंड आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस न्यूज़ पेपर इन थ्री स्टेप्स फर्स्ट इज वाई द न्यूज सेकेंड इज वॉट इज द न्यूज एंड थर्ड इज वॉट कैन बी द फ्यूचर प्रॉस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द न्यूज सो कमिंग टू अवर फर्स्ट न्यूज इज एन सी आर पी रिलीज डेटा फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन सो नाउ दिस इज नेशनल क्राइम रिकॉर्ड ब्यूरो इट हैज रिलीज दिस डेटा and it has several findings for example first time daily wager suicides cross quarter of national total that means the total suicides that have occurred 1 by 4th of the total were daily wager suicides now daily wager largest groups among suicide victims now the national average was 7.17 percent, but in 2021 there was 11.52 percent rise in deaths. So this was the main finding. Also, 36 percent of crime against children under POCSO. So you know POCSO is Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act. Now these children. suffered uh, one or other kind of crime and it has increased to 36% now uh, what are the future prospects of this news obviously government will look at this data because it releases data for assessment now as the data has released government will look forward for it and it will take steps definitely to improve uh, such uh, miserable conditions of our country now next comes the news is pakistan floods modi reaches out discussions on to extend aid now why this news i'll tell you that pakistan is suffering from a enormous flood the same uh, monsoon southern uh, west monsoon that uh, causes rain in our country also causes rain in pakistan too so its main peak area is july and august now in india our main peak area is uh, june and july so now uh, because of this floods now our prime minister modi has reached out to pakistan and he said that he would extend the humanitarian aid okay so looking at his statement he said that he was saddened to see the devastation and hoped for early restoration of normalcy and he discussed that the highest levels of possibility of extending humanitarian assistance are underway to pakistan so uh we can see that uh modi is giving humanitarian assistance to pakistan it's a good cause uh saddened to see the devastation caused by the floods in the pakistan we extend our heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims the injured and all those affected by this natural calamity and hope for an early restoration of normalcy now i think last day or i think last to last day i have explained that 1000 uh, lives have gone in pakistan but now it is uh, according to latest data 1100 lives have gone in pakistan and has displaced 33 million or more people so condition is very severe we see if second page has some um, no i think Uh, okay so condition is very severe and i think this uh, step from india will get applauded in the international community because we know the condition of india and pakistan they are the rival number 1 but uh, in terms of when somebody is in need you must help them and i think india has done so well now our next news is Okay, so future prospect of that news is it can seriously improve the uh, relations of Pakistan and India. 
obviously you know the fact that a friend in need is a friend indeed so whether india and pakistan are friends or not but this need and helping out by india will lead to a better relations between india and pakistan now next comes the news is geo 5g in four metros within two months all india rollouts in 18 month so okay 5g is coming now four metro area within two months and within 18 months all india will be a 5g so this is by uh, geo only now other telecom uh, you can say will release their own plans how much they can do for india and how much early they can do for india so coming to our next news is supreme court fixes hijab hearing for september 5 declines more time to petitioners so okay this news is because uh, in karnatak there was an issue of hijab if you uh, know then it's well if you don't know i will tell you that uh, schools uh, going girls wear hijab in karnatak those who are, are muslims so now what uh, school have told that uh, school has not allowed the uni uh, this kind of uh, hijab uniform in their old school premises they have told that school is not a religious place or anything else you have to wear dresses only school uniform no hijab so now the uh, women of these are petitioning in supreme court that it's a freedom of expression uh, to wear uh, such type of clothes now supreme court has released its order also it said that uh, high court not supreme court uh, high court has released its order that uh, hijab will not be wear in Karnatak. Now they have reached out to Supreme Court and they will be hearing in 5th of September. So whatever I told uh, previously about Supreme Court, it was about High Court. So High Court, they reached High Court first. Now they are in Supreme Court. So now uh, crimes against women rose by 15.3%. This is also from the same national crime records bureau data and states with highest rate of crime is assam then odisha then haryana then telangana and then rajasthan so these are the highest and cases in 2021 have increased by much larger rate now coming to next news this is all i think political and this uh, is a news that we find interesting because you know our uh, new chief justice of india you lalit have taken his seat now uh, last day uh, he called a meeting urgent and now he has told that new norms for listing urgent cases soon so he will say that he will place a new mechanism for listing of urgent cases and told that give us one or two day we will come out with norms and he said it will be implemented so okay we will see after one or two day uh, what are the new norms for so okay this is all that when this will come i think that that will be more important this is in progress so when the new norms will come i'll explain you pils have a bad run as CGI led bench, bench says no to more than half. So, uh, public interest litigation hearing. This is, uh, I'll explain you why this news because uh, uh, this was started by Supreme Court for helping out those people, such as poor people, laborers, and other uh, sufferers who directly do not uh, uh, file their cases in police station instead of that some other person if he looks that okay such group or uh, such person is suffering from uh, misery then he can file a case against uh, any authority or any person say, uh, saying that such group is suffering 
So now this is a public interest litigation. Now he is saying that no more, no to more than half a dozen of them. Now he is saying that it can no more than half a dozen. The first to get the X was PIL that India can increase its saving rate and growth rate by converting its huge deposits of gold into fixed deposits in bank and sought a direct direction to government to spread awareness to convince Indian women to convert gold into fixed deposits in bank. Now th he said that it was completely misconceived. This was a PIL and next in line was a PIL that said Okay, so he's talking about such, uh, uh, you can say, misconceived PILs, that such kind of PILs spread awareness to convince Indian women or such as that uh, many states are witnessing acute shortage of supply of coal due to power generation processes running at lowest level to address coal shortage. So he said that uh, two lawyers who had filed the PIL if they can file affidavit stating that they are not associated with any power sector firms. Now another PIL request was there to declare as invalid certain provisions of NDPS Act to extent that it criminalizes personal consumption of drugs. Now there was uh, another petition to change your, you can say to in, make invalid the act of drug because it said that it is the right of, you can say it's a uh, choice of person to take drugs. So all of this is absurd, you can say it. He said that court does not impose harsh puni punishment and uh, added that if sections are held invalid, drug peddlers will be peddled in that particular quantity. So it's saying that so many PILs are there and so many absurd PIs come to Supreme Court. Obviously it was made for the benefit of those sections who are not uh, able to get justice by their own but now it is used by such persons to get their rivalry done or you can say get their business run. All of this have taken place in the name of PIL. So now what are the future prospects? I think because uh, you know there was a case when Supreme Court imposed 5 lakh rupees fine on uh, a person who posed such a uh, absurd uh, PIL. Now obviously it has two signs. Uh, normal person will be uh, you can say fearful of uh, filing such a PIL in the Supreme Court little bit. But most important, uh, you can say, positive aspect is that the PILs that are of no use, no worth, will not be filed in Supreme Court because of that fine of 5 lakh. So also it has a UNGA, which is United Nations General Assembly President, have said that India is world's pharmacy. So. It has said that India's neighborhood first and Maldives India first policies complement each other. Now acknowledging the pivotal role that India played during the COVID recovery phase, the Maldivian leader underscored that the India has proven to be pharmacy of the world that assisted several countries in the remotest part of the world. Okay, so this is good because it seriously increases India's reputation in the world and this will give a good uh, way or you can say path for India's pharmacy business to expand its uh, area into the more you can say countries and world. Now comes the explain page. Now Geo standalone 5D architecture and how it will work. I don't think it's a matter of uh, private sector. We will see how this will work. Okay, so now next news is destination moon and beyond. NASA aborted the first flight of its giant moon rocket on Monday, postponing the launch of an 
exciting new space of space of new age of space exploration that aims to return humans on lunar surface so uh, this was a you can say a mission that have the objective of uh, taking the human beings you can say of earth to the moon and possibly beyond in fact i think to mars and elsewhere so now what nasa has done is that it has postponed its flight so we'll see why such thing has occurred launch of a keenly awaited space mission that is being seen as a start of a new age in space exploration has to be put off on monday evening after engineers were unable to resolve a problem involving adequate flow of liquid hydrogen to one of the rockets rockets four engines so okay so this launch has been postponed why because engineers of nasa were unable to resolve a problem and what kind of problem is that the problem is that the flow of uh, liquid hydrogen cannot be done in adequate manner to one of the rockets four engine now what is the mission is nasa's artemis 1 mission and what is its aim its aim is to explore the moon with the specific objective of getting human beings back on the lunar surface which is moon moon is also called lunar surface and possibly beyond to mars and elsewhere now nasa did not say when it would attempt to launch the mission again so it has not specified a date that it is postponed to such and such date but has said that it is only postponed now we'll see when this uh, day comes there are at least two windows of opportunity in the next one week and more after few weeks but uh, as soon as the problem is fixed it will depend on how long it will take now back to the moon uh how many years it has been passed since we have landed moon in terms of human beings it has been 50 years since the six apollo human beings landing between 1969 and 72 there has been huge progress in space exploration since then now space crafts have gone beyond the solar system and has also explored missions across mars jupiter saturn and also more than 500 astronauts have traveled to space and they have come back and also a permanent space laboratory such as the international space station have been set up now i'll tell you an interesting thing uh, you know when russia and ukraine started a war and also us you can say nato was the main bone of the war uh, then uh, these russian and american uh, uh, you can say not soldiers these russian and american astronauts were coming in the flight together from this space it was such a funny thing that oh, two f- uh, countries are fighting and also they are coming back so how were the promise of transporting human beings to the new worlds the possibility of landing and living on other planets or traveling deep into space probably even encountering aliens has remained stagnant since the last of the 12 astronauts to set foot on the moon returned in 1972 now all these things possibility of landing transporting human beings to new planets and also traveling deep into space in fact countering aliens also it has remained a dream since the last 12 astronauts set foot to moon and they have returned in 1972 so it is saying that since 1972 no human have uh, you can say have kept his foot in the moon this is why artemis 1 is being seen as a ushering in new space age and the first in a series of ambitious mission it's the first one that has planned to take human being back to the moon explore possibilities of extended stay there also okay so it is planning to take human beings going to stay them there and investigate the potential to use it as a launch pad for deep space exploration now on the face of it uh, artemis first has extremely humble missions of objective it's technically only a lunar orbital mission not carrying any astronauts 
does not have any lander or rover component uh, i will tell you what is a rover rover is you can say a, a device it's like a spider uh, kind of device looks like a spider which runs on the moon surface on its own or it runs on the mars surface or its own it does not have any uh, lander or rover component basically it's used to observe identify and for other things too for investigating also the surface and weather climate etc of the uh, different planets the mission is case spacecraft which is called orion and it will get into lunar orbit that will be about 97 km from the moon surface as it's closest so i think this is not that important we will see because this is too scientific okay i'll tell you that there were moon landings in 1960s and 70s and man has has reached moon just 12 years after the first ever satellite which is sputnik which has been launched now apollo mission were guided by geo so sputnik was russian and this apollo was us mission so this is all history setting this stage now artemis first is all about laying the foundations for more complex and ambitious mission it is carrying some scientific uh, satellites you can say i will tell you especially about one one is cubesat and it will search for water in all its form and another will map the availability of hydrogen also that can be utilized as a source of energy then also its objective is to do biology experiments and also investigating the behavior of small small organisms like fungi and algae in the outer space and also the effect of radiation especially the reaction on their genes so this will be all experiment that will be conducted now i don't think this is this is all data and it has been aborted now problem has been detected a few hours ahead of launch and when uh, we'll get it fixed then we'll fly so this is the main uh, news so i think it's a very massive uh, satellite space mission and if it occurs it will be a, a great achievement by human beings uh, as well so we will track this when this will be launched and also tracking it will be successful or not because uh, astronauts have gone there uh, since for 12 years but normal human being uh, you can say every human being is normal but uh, the non astronauts who are not astronauts who are not uh, very much trained for this i think they must be trained and they are being trained for going there so there is some criteria that you have to be this much educated this much you have to be your body and everything not everyone can go to moon so this is also very important to know so now coming to my economy page uh, i think this sensex headline is not that important rbi in talks to set up registry to check banking frauds so this is important why it's doing that with the intent of improving consumer protection amid cases of digital fraud the rbi of india is in discussion to set up a fraud registry to create a database of fraudulent websites phones and various methods used by fraudsters so okay it's, it's talking that it will keep a database it will keep a track and also a data that how these um, methods are used by fraudster as well as who are the fraudster websites and also the phone numbers of that now i can see the rbi is in discussion with different stakeholders including central banks department of payments settlement supervision and rbi executive director said that how this database uh, database will help is that it will help prevent these fraudsters 
from repeating the fraud as the websites or phone numbers would be blacklisted. So this will seriously, you can say, help in reducing the digital crime. And we will see how such database will be maintained. Coming to uh, next is Parekh who is HDFC chairman has said that PM Modi has done a remarkable job and also raised question that democracy needs a stronger opposition and we do not have one right now. So talking about other things also he has talked about opposition as well. Coming to the word news is that I have explained this about Pakistan that Pakistan is suffering from floods. now. Uh, international help is coming out. Government considers importing vegetables and other edible items from India. Also, IMF has approved $1.7 billion bailout uh, for Pakistan extended fund facility. For Pakistan, I, we seriously hope that this problem gets solved very well because a lot of people are dying there. And in future, we will see how this goes on. UN expert will head to nuclear plant this week. So by the news I will tell you that this news is regarding a Zaporizhia nuclear plant and it is situated in Ukraine, one of the biggest Europe's uh, nuclear plant. It is controlled by Russian troops because of obviously this invasion by Russia and um, the persons who work there are Ukrainian. Now both sides are firing each other missiles. In this region of nuclear plants, very lethal because it can cause catastrophe in the whole planet. So now what UN is trying to do, UN IAEA, which is International Atomic Energy Agency, is trying to get control of this nuclear plant and also it wants to demilitarize this zone, that wants to tr remove all the troops from this zone. Now what have, uh, what's the main news? I think I've told you. So, okay. So after weeks of contentious negotiations involving Russia, whose forces occupy the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and the Ukraine, the head of nuclear uh, UN nuclear watchdog agency, which is IAEA, has announced that the inspectors were on their way and which would reach the site later this week. So IAEA director have told that even as they repeated accusations that the other side was responsible for the shell shelling. So both Ukraine and Russia are accusing each other for shelling. He did not specify how mission would reach Zaporizhia, which is Europe's larger nuclear facility. And it's a sprawling complex of six light water reactors, cooling towers, machine rooms, and radioactive waste storage agency. Now, uh, it what the US had, uh, you can say, what the Moscow has said that it would facilitate the visit and that the agency has signaled that it intends to station some experts at this Zaporizhia nuclear plant on a permanent basis. So I think if this is being done, I think a serious catastrophe can be uh, removed from our own world because it will be a grave injury to the whole humanity if such an injury occurs to the human. So we hope that uh, this uh, mission of UN is successful because it has been decided since a few, I think say a few weeks, uh, the UN secretary who was Antero Guterres, who all, uh, he also said that if one miscalculation occur, then it could lead to a serious uh, catastrophe by human beings to the whole world, a whole planet, whole environment and 65% of the human beings, that is 5 billion of the people, will be dead. I have told you this repeatedly in like every day. But this is a very important uh, news. Also, here comes the end to our news. 
so you can also read this newspaper as well